Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In today's video, we're going to review using a helper class to do common functions that you might need to perform in an ADF application. One of them is setting the scopes of uh, various uh, variables that you want to hold in memory. Um, so you would need to perhaps get a user ID then you would use that on one page or a series of pages and by specifying a particular scope you would then decide well this can live for a certain period of time uh, in the application so this is a, a, a blog that I found um, and this is commonly what you'll see and you'll have different pages and different things going on and this really shows you how long the uh, scopes will last. So if you set something for session scope or application scope or request scope or page for scope, they last different periods of time based on um, you know what pages you're on and such. And I'm not really going to go over that, but I want to be able to show you how that works in an application. So um, this is what you would do is you would commonly in the view controller create a utils.java class where you would put these common methods that um, are all perhaps related to each other or provi provide for certain functionality that you would need. So in this case, I'm setting the request scope. So I'm basically creating a request, I'm creating a variable that's going to have a certain value. And then in this one, I'm getting that variable and I'm just uh, probably going to print it to the screen, really, or print it on a, a field. This one, I'm setting the view scope, which is a certain length of period of time that will last in memory. Page flow scope. Session scope is basically the session of a person who logs in and how long they're logged in. And when they log out, the memory of the, the variable will die in memory. And application scope is rather interesting. If, if one person opens it, and then another applicant, another person opens it in another application, they'll see the value because it's based on the entire application. So this is uh, <clears throat> what I uh, will be using mostly today, um, setting this, all of them the same exact value. So I have a bunch of um, different pages here. Let's start with our ADFC config. And you'll see that this is an unbounded task flow. It's got page one on it, page two, and then another task flow. Uh, or, yes. And you can see that this has, uh, page one has a field and it's request scope dot name. This is page flow scope dot name, view scope dot name, session scope dot name, and application scope dot name. And you can see then if we come over to page two, it's got pretty much the same thing. Uh, I should point out that um, <clears throat> this has a button to set the scope. And page two also has a button to set the scope. It's gotten a button to go back to page one, and it's a button to go to the task flow. And here is the task flow over here. And it's a bounded task flow with a JSPX page on it, not a, not a, a JSFF page, fragment page but a real JSPX page. And here you see that I have, again, the same similar situation, all different, the same fields. And there's a set scope button. And then there's a get out of the task flow and go back to page two. And then there's another page. Here is interesting because this represents an, um, a region. And this region is represented by, not this, sorry, this one, this task flow here, it's a bounded task flow. Page four and page five. Now, if you look at these, this is a JSFF page, which means that it's a fragment. But it's got all the same fields, and it's got a set, set scope button and a go to page five button. And if we go to page five, wherever we are here, here we are, you can see that it's got the same thing, and it's got a go back button. But again, all of these have the same values, okay? 
And page six itself, which I believe is uh, in one of these task rows, has a very similar situation, but no buttons at all. So how are we going to use this? Let's open up uh, our application and run it. Now let me go back to page one. If I can find it here. And we'll look at the set scope. And this is all the same for all of them. It's got a string key and a string, key, a string, a string value. And I'm setting using the set all scopes and it's passing the same values over and over again, except the page number changes. That's so we can see what set where and how long those memories last. Now, granted, I don't have uh, in my task flows, I don't have a huge amount going on. If you look at this page, for example, it's got a router, a method, and then the task flow call. I suppose I do have a task flow call there. But um, yeah, maybe we should have another field over here to see what's going on, another uh, page over here. So um, here we are. So let's just go and look at page two page two here and we're going to go to page three in the task flow now remember this is the embedded or actually it's a region and it's got page four and page five in it and you can see that we can toggle back and forth and nothing else changes here it uses ajax to change i'm going to set the scope here now you'll notice that the scope doesn't change here um, if we go back to page four, you can see that the view scope disappeared. And if we go out and then back in, you can see that the request scope stayed. All of these disappeared, which I'm rather surprised about, especially the application scope. Um, out of it, yeah, something seems wrong here now. Set scopes, page three, out of task flow. Okay, so this this held, and this held. I would expect, however, that uh, the task flow, and in previous versions, now we're seeing that the, these two should stay because these are here. This is the one I'm surprised about because I believed when I started doing this that the the request scope would probably be one of the shorter ones. But that one seems to be the one that's lasting the longest. Okay, so let's go to page five again. Set the scope here. You can see that this is still, well, let's go out and then go back in. You can see that the request scope is set to five. This was set, yeah, something's, I don't think, uh, set scope. Yeah, for some reason, it's not picking it up here. But the reason that I did this is I want you to see how this behaves. It's rather interesting. It's not as clearly as I thought it would be. First of all, I didn't expect this to be still maintaining this memory because it's a request scope. I thought it would last as long as I was on the page. Um, so I've learned a little bit about how these work. Uh, and, and that's the point because how it looks and that what you think it's supposed to do versus how it actually behaves is another story. Let's go out of the task flow here and we'll go to page one and we'll set the scopes all to one now. Go to page two. We would expect the view scope to disappear because that tends to be on the view you're working on. The page flow tends to be on the scope that you're working on and considering that we're in here to here, it's the same um, task flow. If we go to page uh, in here, <clears throat> we would accept, expect the page scope to disappear because it's in a different task flow. Um, and if we go from page three to six, I don't know, let's see here, hold on, sorry. Let's go back here, page three to six. Yeah, um, well, I didn't set it. Oh, wait, I don't think I have page six set. That's all right. <clears throat> but um, you would expect this and this to stay. Now, let's bring up a browser here. 
and uh, we're going to copy this into here. And I'm going to bring up an entirely different browser. I'm going to bring up uh, Mozilla Firefox. And see what we get. Oh, look at that. Application scope. <clears throat> That's actually how it's supposed to be. And if we go to page two and we skip, set the scopes here, we have page two. Now, if we come back here and we go out, let's see, page one. Well, it didn't refresh here, um, but if I do F5, it should. So this is how it works. Continue. Well, that's it. So this is how uh, page scopes work. Thank you very much.